back with another episode of the Where You At show. Yeah. We're going to jump right into it, introduce yourself, let them know where we at. Yo, what it is, it's your boy Don Trump. I mean, the studio that I built, managed, and basically live my life in Dream First Studios right there. So, this home sweet home, 11,000 square feet studio building. Right now you're in Studio B. We got to finish Studio A, Studio C, and the production hub. So, it's a lot of work, but the dream coming true. You know what I'm saying? Dream First Studios. You know, I've known you for probably over a decade well, now. Well over a decade. At and least 16 years. At least maybe 15. And I'm going to go back yeah. to when you had your group, the Block Hustlers. Yeah. And even at that time, yeah. <laughs> everybody could tell who the quarterback was. I just, I like, my thing was like, everybody knew I liked music, especially hip hop. And like all my friends was like, we all was cool, so we all liked the same things. And, you know, you can't really go outside and not worry about your, your environment because your environment is everything around you. You know, you are your environment. And, like, we just like doing music. And we talked about where we live, like the block, the hood. This is where we at. All you right, well, well, well the, tell, the, tell the people where your passion for music started from. Um, so my thing with music was I just liked how it sounded. Like, my mother and them used to give me vinyl. Marvin Gaye, everybody. And I just like the vinyl. I like to listen to it. I like to put it on the, like actually put the needle on the vinyl. I just like music. You know, it was always around me. My grandfather was a jazz musician. I just like music. I loved it to death. I ain't know what I wanted to do with it when I was a kid. I just knew I loved music. And as I started getting older, because I could draw and do all that stuff, I was like, yo, I want to do music. Everybody I knew was like, around me that was older was like, hustling, selling drugs, and it's like all of them like the rappers, and I like the rappers, I like the music. And it's like, they want to be rappers, but they hustling, and it's like, yo, everybody loves music. It's a, it's a universal language. And it was easier to tell everybody, yo, come over to the crib and do music. You know what I'm saying? Like, my first piece of gear that I got was an NPC, and ever since then, I just got it. My aunt gave me a computer. Like, that was that changed my life. We wouldn't have never had none of the stuff when we was younger if my aunt ain't gave me a computer. Cause that's how I got everybody come over the house and start recording. And that's how I learned how to do a lot of stuff. A Dell computer at that. Like, I don't, I don't think y'all understand. Like, Mac, MacBooks and all that. That stuff fast as shit right now. But the computers that we had when we was young, they was slow as I don't know what. And Pro Tools cost a lot of money. Like, I remember the Digio 2, I had got that for like $1,800. And I was like 15 years old. So just imagine a 15 year old with $1,800. Like, how'd I get that? You know what I'm saying? So. As a kid, I got that, put a studio in my grandma's basement. She let me put it in there. My uncle, he was high off drugs, and she kicked him out the basement. She gave me the basement. So just imagine your uncle getting high. Rest in peace, Uncle Ralph. But like your uncle getting high and like doing all this crazy stuff, and then all of a sudden you got the basement to yourself. You know? I put a studio down there, and everybody around the way came over and recorded. So that started this. That's how all this got started. Break down some of your titles. We know you're a producer, but mm -hmm. what else? You're an engineer. Keep going. Man, I mean, of course we go a producer because you know that I produce the artists and the products and stuff. Engineer is just, I ain't know what it was at the time. Like, somebody tell you you're an engineer, you like, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, never understood the term, to be honest. And um, I ain't realized like I'm engineering somebody's sound or making them sound crisp and clean levels and frequencies. I ain't understand what none of that was. All I know is my homeboy's coming over my house, there's a microphone right there, and I gotta record him and make sure the headphones don't bleed. Like, this is all the stuff you think about when you're young, and then as you get older, you start developing the hours and stuff. And I just realized, like, yo, I really am an engineer. But I was producing people. Like, people coming in the basement, like, no, sing it this way, do it this way. No, yo, I don't like that beat, let's add a kick, snare. I ain't realize all that was producing and engineering at the time. I just thought I was just making my friends sound good on the low. You know what I'm saying? So out of everybody, like what made you stick to to the music? What made you stick to this dream of yours? Yo, my grandmother was like, you go outside, you're going to get killed. You know, something bad going to happen to you in the neighborhood. You know what I'm saying? So growing up, it's like we wanted to go outside. We wanted to have, we ain't had no internet. We ain't had none of that stuff. Like MySpace was just becoming a thing. And like 
Black Planet and all that. We ain't have the internet like how they got it now. Like you can go on your phone and your whole life on your phone. We ain't had phones and none of that stuff. We barely had Nextel Church. So it's like we, everything we did was either outside or word of mouth. So growing up, it's like I go outside, people get killed, all this crazy ass stuff happening. It's just like, yo, I can stand here. I can make music, I can be cool, I can keep my friends off the streets. That's how we was thinking. Like, either you go outside, you get in trouble, something happened to you, or you stay in here, chill with us, we all smoke, chill in the basement, have fun, and just make music. And that's what we did. And I'm just glad that that, you know, during that time, I had music, because anything could have happened. Because we was definitely, definitely being young and dumb. So I'm glad we had music at that time. I'm glad I bought piece by piece, yeah. Just imagine everybody around the way coming over to record. I was charging like $20 an hour. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Four people a day, two hours a day. You know, you start making $100 a day, $200 a day, $300 a day. You start buying little pieces of gear. And that was like my obsession. Like to buy this microphone, to buy this headphone, to buy this. That was my obsession. And clearly see, I ain't stopped. So. I just, that's what kept me in the house for doing music, kept me safe. So tell the people where music has taken you, like, you know, different places around the country and all that. All right, so music took me to my grandmother's basement to going on tours. No, funny story, all right, bet. Funny story from high school, right? You remember Miss Hawkins, right? Facts. Miss Hawkins Hallway, Emerson Westside. Miss Hawkins used to tell me, Dion, and Danny not to be singing Drew Hill in the hallway. Cause we used to be joking, singing Five Steps, Beauty and all that, right? And I remember Miss Hawkins was like, you ain't gonna never meet them, shut up and go to class. Cause I was in her class, right? You ain't gonna never meet them. Well, fast forward to years later, and it's crazy cause Drew Hill on my shirt. Fast forward to years later, I done been on tour with Drew Hill numerous times. Worked on the last two hours with Drew Hill. And I was just a kid, like, when they came out in 96 when they came out and they're like we went to high school in 2000 so it's like they was at their prime at that time thong song was like the biggest song on the radio at the time and i was like dying to meet these people like i'm dying to meet nokio and cisco and all of them and just fast forward a few years later i had built a name up for myself and they reached out to me like nokio came in the crib of my homeboy jay funk my man l house jay funk took me over l house and he like yo answer the door and it's nokio so just think, the kid from high school that was joking around singing Drew Hill in the hallway with his homeboys end up meeting the founder of the group, Nokio, who did, wrote, produced all the songs, end up meeting him, and then yo like, yo, just come on the road with me. Just come make music with me. Like, we've been in the studio like damn near every single day as much as possible since then. You know what I'm saying? So music took me a lot of places outside of Baltimore. That was the goal. If I could make it out of Baltimore and get out for a few days, like I remember the first time music took me to California, I ain't had to pay for nothing. Nothing. During Christmas time. I ain't had to pay one cent. You know what I'm saying? Music took me to California and I was like, yo, I never thought I'd ever make it to the West Coast. Ever. And we went to the studio, met Rod and Jerkins, you know, Dog Child, in the same chair, sit, sitting in the same studio chair that Janet Jackson just got out of, you know what I'm saying? Like in a room with like people that wrote for Janet, people that wrote for all these famous people. And I'm like, yo, we was just in Baltimore like six hours ago. Like, ain't that crazy? Now, you know, um, unfortunately, we lost a brother recently. Yeah. You know, Kenny Bean. Bean. You feel me? What What makes you um not leave Baltimore but stay here and make this your home base? What yo, makes you want to keep working on the artists and the culture here? Speaking of Bean, like, we was just talking about this the other day, like, Bing was a good dude. Like, he really was a good dude. Like, in high school, Bing actually was in the basement recording. Kenny was actually in. I remember the first time we was joking about him coming to the studio, well, my grandmother's house, but coming over to record. He was like, yo, I can rap. And I was just like, whatever, nigga. Like, come through. So he came over, and I put up. We had this cheap ass Radio Shack mic. I think I paid, <laughs> I think I paid like $40 for this mic. And, um,. I had got the little shock mount and all that, made it look all cool, put the uh, one of my grandma's pantyhose, stocking cap, whatever thing on top of the mic, and bing, <laughs> and bing and went in front of the mic. And yo had rap, I think I, I gotta find it. I got somewhere, I gotta listen to that. But yeah, like, that's crazy. 
Rest in peace, Ben. Rest in peace, Ken. Yeah, but Baltimore is one of them cities that people don't understand. Like, we get a negative rep. They make us out like we the worst people on the planet. Like, even the president talks shit about us. Like, we ain't nothing. Like, saying there's a whole bunch of rats and rollings in our city. Yeah, our city dirty as shit. I ain't gonna sit in front. Lexington Market is zombie land, walking dead, whatever you want to call it. But at the end of the day, the people here is real. The people honest, and they're going to let you know that they fuck with you or they don't fuck with you. I love my city because everybody here is themselves. Nobody fronting to be somebody they not. Of course, Atlanta and all these other cities is big in the music industry and the film industry. That's cool, but our city is real. And people that's here know, like, yo, I will punch you in the mouth if you be phony with me. And no other city is really like that. And I love my city for that. Like, forget all this industry crap. Everybody trying to get on. Forget all that. Like, if you test the Baltimore person, they're going to confront you. And that's why I love my city. And the artists here, I don't care what nobody say. Artists ain't on. We not mentioned on none of the top ten or none of that stuff. I don't care what y'all say. The artists here, if you gave them a chance to really, like, be themselves, like the Tate Cobains, the Shorties. If you give all these artists a chance to be themselves without no industry gatekeepers or none of that stuff, They'd be some of the biggest artists you've ever seen. We got Jimi Hendrix. We got the Beatles. We got all them type of artists here. We got Paul McCartney's. We got um, LL Cool J's. Whatever artists. Prince. Whatever. We got all them artists here. They just need the outlet. They need to stop being blocked from these industry phony ass people and give them a chance. You feel me? So that's why I stay here. It's not because I don't want to leave because I can leave if I wanted to. But why you gonna leave something that you can help build and watch everybody be successful? I got access to all the best. Baltimore has the best musicians in the world. Why I'ma leave that? If I need a guitar played, if I need a trumpet played, I need a violin, I need a saxophone, all these people that play the best, and I do mean the best, live in Baltimore. So of course, it's a perfect place to have a studio, perfect place to be creative. Just don't knock us. We talked about the past. We talked about the presence here. We have Dream First Studios right now, your very own studio. What you got for the future, bro? Right now, I'm like totally converting part of the studio into a production hub. Because we get into the point where every time I turn on TV, news, whatever, they say Baltimore can't come together, can't do nothing. And the dream was like, as a kid for me, was just to build a studio and have a place where we could be safe and create music. That was my dream as a kid, you feel me? That dream exists. So now I gotta do that for other people that's just as talented as me and keep them all, keep them off the streets and like, so nothing happened like how shit happened to my homeboy King Bean, keep everybody in the area where they all just creating and not being outside around shit that can happen to them. And we got the best producers here, so I wanna create a production hub for all the producers here. Like, I love Barry Gordy, I love Smokey Robinson, I always looked up to them as kids. My mother always talked about, Barry Gordy's a positive image, you need to be like that. And I always looked at it like, okay, mom, I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna be young, I'm gonna do some dumb stuff, I'm gonna hang around with the wrong crowds of people, but eventually I'm gonna get to my mindset to being like Fresh Prince and, and Barry Gordy, and my mind is dead now. So I just wanna create a production hub where I can really help the producers in the city. Like, you might not know how to count bars, you might not know nothing about a metronome, you might not know nothing about creating music the right way, but some of us that went through that, and we know what to do, we know how to do it correctly. So just come here and let me show you how to do it, and you just be creative. So I'm just creating a 24-hour production hub and just really make it so that when people from Baltimore want to be creative and get on and get placements and stuff, they come here first. That's where they come and they become something. Y'all heard it first, man. It's for the cities, for the culture. Yeah. Dream, dream first. Dream first. Dream first. Don Trump. Whatever you do, dream first. And we're going to we're gonna sign out, man. Thanks, yeah. bro. Appreciate where the interview. Yeah, sure. It's where we at. <laughs>